Hi, I'm Owen from Square Balloon, and today I'm going to talk you through how to understand the age of a website. So let's get started. Um, this is the website that we've chosen for the example. We see it's Lexton Builders Limited, and we can see it's a, a full page website uh, with some testimonials down below. So what I'll do is I'll go to the Wayback Machine. So um, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's a bit slow loading, so I've already loaded it. So what we'll see is this is uh, this is the website, and I've gone back. What I would do is uh, check that it looks the same. So um, it, it should look exactly the same as the real website. It might be very slightly different. So in this case, the header seems to be blue instead of grey, but overall it looks roughly the same. So here's the website, and here's the um, Wayback Machine, and it's roughly the same. So, um, so now we've discovered that, what we would do is we would, we would go back and try and find one earlier. So I've done it already, and I found one in 2016. Now you can see that this is not full screen, although the header looks very similar um, to the other one. It's been reduced in size uh, in the old website, and it didn't go full screen. didn't have the testimonials at the bottom. These, um, well, these are not here on this one either. On the real website they are. So e even this one back here in 2016 is slightly different, but it's roughly the same. It's just had some content added to it. But we know um, back here they had a pretty major redesign where it wasn't um, full screen. So we could say that we think the last time this template was updated would probably be around March the 23rd, 2016. So that's not 100% um, accurate. It could be that there are some differences. It could be that they did some minor updates in between. You can see here is all the, the records that have changed. And um, you know even the one we've picked is, is slightly different. But we know that that kind of looks roughly the same. So if they did any sort of major work on this website, that's when, when it would uh, happen. So uh, let's talk through the quickest way to do this, really. Um, so if I was to start on the, um, the, the first one that we see. Um, so here we go. So this is the original first one that the Wayback Machine's got saved. And you can see the difference on this one is that there's a grey background and a blue header. So it's slightly different, but not enough of a difference to say they've had a major website rebuild. Um, what I would generally do is look at all of these changes, see that they're all quite a lot in a row, and assume that they're minor changes for this website. And I'd look for a gap, and then I'd find something like this. Uh, so on this one, if, I could say with quite certainty that this one back here is going to be different. Not only because it's from 2015, which is five years ago, but there's quite a big gap where there were no changes to the site and the Wayback Machine didn't capture anything. So if we were to go back there to start off with, this would be the, the in my opinion, it takes quite a long time to load, so I wouldn't necessarily click back one at a time. So okay, so we can see here that it has changed, um, but it looks kind of like the other one we had. So what then I would do is say there's a big gap. Let's see if this one looks the same. So I'd right click and open it just so I can see the difference. Again, it takes a while to load, so I wouldn't necessarily go to each one. But these two look very similar. Slight difference in the um, in the layout, perhaps. Um, but nothing major. So I would consider that to be roughly the same website. So then I, again, I would say there's a, I wouldn't go to this one, but there's a gap here. Perhaps there's a change here. So then I would open up one of those to see if that was the difference. And the idea is just to try and reduce the amount of time you spend looking and loading this stuff. If you get a 503 error, it's quite common. It's a, a very slow and oversubscribed website. So just refresh it. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means it didn't work that particular time. So let's, uh, let's hope that it doesn't go down. As I was doing this video a minute ago, the website went down. So let's hope it doesn't. And so, just to talk you through the methodology, I start at the beginning here, I see that these are all touching each other, so I doubt there's a massive change. I look for the gaps, and then I just try and go the further away, and then maybe halfway in between, and then try and find the changes, and just check halfway, then halfway, then halfway. Sometimes you get something like this, which is um, the styling has not loaded, 
it's quite common I wouldn't worry about it too much I wouldn't say that this means there's been a website change I would say the thing to look for in this would be are the, is the content the same is the text the same is it uh, roughly in, it might not be in the same order but is it the same heading and text these three or four or five images um, they're all the same so I would consider that the styling hasn't loaded so if I look and see Colchester Builders uh, and then I go back here so here I can see that I can't see that Colchester Builders so perhaps something has changed uh, Lexington Builders of Colchester Essex oh so that's that Lexington Builders 25 years experience so that's that so so this bit at the top um, it looks like this will be the menu so if we look at the menu um, so yeah that is the menu and then uh, that bit at the top I'm not sure where that's loading but it's somewhere on the page I imagine um, so I then would just jump along the, the idea is to reduce the amount of times the page loads so just jump in between um, the sections so jump back quite away and then if it's changed like you know that you can go back towards the original so go maybe halfway and just keep going in halves and halves and halves because that would be the quickest way to reduce it after you use the site a few times you get used to the idea of looking for the gaps and trying to work out based on the amount of gaps uh, in the timeline and also the age of the website so chances are people are not having a website redesigned every single year but they may have one redesigned every two or three years so you might just jump back three years as a start and get used to those sort of habits so here we can go we found in 2017 it was roughly the same so we know this isn't uh, the news type um, but here we found in 2016 in January it was um, it was different so that would be what I would consider now January 2016 that's roughly the age the website was uh, old and the new one was redesigned shortly after that so we could then approach a client and say we see that your website is four years old um, would you like to redesign it uh, or in this case they have redesigned it so um, we would work out the correct age so 2017 three years old maybe they don't want to redesign it yet maybe they do but um, that's a discussion we need to have with the clients and that is how I find out how old a website is uh, so that I can give clients good advice on things like um, what has changed in the internet in that time new trends um, whether we could improve their conversion rates and um, help them out in some way to uh, generate more business or something like that I hope that helps thanks for listening